Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of video analysis and lessons about Irish history. Now today we're going into something that is without a doubt the most controversial event in Irish history still to this day. And this is the Anglo-Irish Treaty of 1921 and the Civil War which then lasted until 1923 as a result. Now, before we go on we have to look at a couple of objectives here. What was the Anglo-Irish Treaty? What was the reaction to the treaty? What were the causes of the Civil War? What were the main events of the Civil War? And indeed, what were the results of the Civil War? So bearing in that in mind, let's go on another deep dive, shall we? So when the truce was called in July 1921, the two sides needed to work out a formal agreement. This had to be done under the shadow of the Government of Ireland Act. The British government had passed this act in 1920, and this had divided Ireland into two parts. In other words, it had partitioned it. One part had the six Ulster counties with a Home Rule Parliament in Belfast. It was called Northern Ireland. Its first Prime Minister was James Craig. The other part was called Southern Ireland. It was to have a Home Rule Parliament in Dublin. This Parliament never came into existence, as we will see. Now here are the treaty negotiators, including Michael Collins and Arthur Griffith. So on the 11th of July 1921, a truce was called between the British and the IRA. In October, a delegation led by Arthur Griffith went to London to negotiate this treaty with Britain. However, the President, and arguably its most experienced politician and negotiator, Aim de Valera, decided not to go, automatically weakening the delegation. He felt he should remain in Dublin so that the delegation could consult him before agreeing anything. The delegation had two main objectives. To set up an independent Irish Republic, completely independent from Britain, and to end partition and have a unified Ireland. The British aims were led and its delegation were led by its Prime Minister David Lloyd George and its aims included Ireland to stay within the British Commonwealth so as they're afraid that other members of the Commonwealth would also leave if Ireland was successful and to protect the state of Northern Ireland rather than to risk disunionist violence. Talks dragged on until December. Finally Lloyd George issued an ultimatum to accept the following terms or there would be a terrible and immediate war. Now, the British Commonwealth is an association of countries consisting of the UK and its colonies. Now, Ireland would be called a free state under these terms. The free state would not be a republic, but part of the British Commonwealth. This is called dominion status. And what dominion status meant was it was a self-governing country within the British Commonwealth where the king was still the head of state. The king would be the head of state and the TDs would have to take an oath of loyalty to the king. The British Navy would have three key naval ports in Ireland, in Loch Swilly, Cove and Bearhaven. The Governor-General was to be the King's representative in the Free State, and a Boundary Commission was formed to discuss the issue of the divide between Northern Ireland and the Irish Free State. There would be a representative from both Northern Ireland and the Free State, and there would be an independent chairman. Now, Lloyd George had assured the Irish delegates that as a result of the Boundary Commission, areas of Southern Ireland that had a nationalist majority would join the Free State such as Fermanagh and Tyrone. Collins knew that the IRA was in no fit state to restart the War of Independence, and he reluctantly signed the treaty with the other Irish delegates on the 6th of December 1921. Now, the reaction to this was controversial. The treaty split both Sinn Féin and the IRA down the middle. De Valera was annoyed that Collins and Griffith had not consulted him before signing the treaty. The Doyle met to debate the terms of the treaty, and TD spoke with great passion on both sides of the argument. The main arguments in favour of the treaty was that it gave Ireland more independence than Home Rule would have. If the war had started again, the IRA would be beaten. It was the best deal that they could have got under the circumstances. And as Collins had stated, it was a stepping stone to greater independence. Once the British had left, it would be easier to work towards this full independence. Now, the main arguments against the treaty was that it didn't give Ireland the republic that the IRA had fought and that many had died for. Republicans couldn't swear an oath of loyalty to the king as would go against their their belief system and as Ireland was so close to Britain it would be easy for the British government to interfere in Irish affairs as the king was still the head of the state so they went home all the tees listened to their delegates in their constituencies over Christmas and they voted on the 7th of January 1922 it was so narrow that the treaty passed by 64 votes to 57 but those who were against the treaty left the Doyle led by Aim de Valera Arthur Griffith replaced him as president so the causes of the Civil War. Now, the treaty caused much division in the country. It divided families. It divided the IRA so much that the two sides were prepared to fight each other. 
when the British Army began to pull out of the barracks, both pro- and anti-treaty IRA took them over. The pro-treaty IRA were called the Free State Army. The anti-treaty IRA called themselves Republicans, but were also usually known as Irregulars. The Irregulars, who were led by Rory O'Connor, took over the four courts in Dublin. And, as a result of that, Collins left them alone as he wanted to avoid a civil war. In the general election of June 1922, a majority of the people had also voted in favour of the treaty. This gave Collins the confidence to face up to O'Connor. With the anti-treaty force in the four courts kidnapped, General O'Connell of the Free State Army, it gave Collins the excuse he wanted and the excuse he needed to attack the irregulars in the four courts. Now, the main events of the Civil War. So on the 28th of June 1922, Collins used artillery, barred from the British, to fire in the four courts. This was the start of the Civil War. Within two days, the Irregulars in the Four Courts had surrendered. The Irregulars were defeated in Dublin within a week, but the Irregulars themselves retreated to Munster, where their support was strongest. They set up the Munster Republic. Liam Lynch was their chief of staff. The Irregulars used guerrilla warfare tactics against the Free State troops and gradually took control of Munster. On the 12th of August 1922, Ireland and the Irish Free State are dealt a big blow. As Arthur Griffiths suddenly died of a stroke, Ten days later, on the 22nd of August, Michael Collins was killed in an ambush at Bale and West Cork. So in August 1922, William T. Cosgrave now becomes the leader of the Doyle. He appoints Kevin O'Higgins as the man in charge of law and order, and Kevin O'Higgins passes a Special Powers Act that allows them to execute irregulars for offences such as having a gun. De Valera tried to get the irregulars to stop fighting, as he saw there was no hope for them. In May 1923, the irregulars agreed to a ceasefire. So what were the results of the civil war? Well, there was £30 million worth of damage had been caused. Cities, towns, roads and railways were damaged. This caused a huge disruption to the economy. You had almost 600 people killed. The nation was left divided and families were divided and bitter for decades afterwards. And the two major parties of the Free State had their origins in the civil war. Come in the Gael were renamed Fine Gael in the 1930s were pro-treaty and Fianna Fáil was the anti-treaty party. Thanks for listening to this. We'll be back with another video again real soon. Goodbye.